107,000 veterans are living on the streets on any given night. Think about that. When these clowns over in Wall Street were reaching into our pockets, I asked them, think about that. Continue to think about that. Think about our responsibilities to these veterans. Easy to talk about. It's like patting our cops and our firefighters on the back, great job, and then asking them to take a pay cut. We talk a good game. We really do. We're good at it. We can, we can talk. And as you're in this business long enough, you can really talk. I mean, you can get people to believe anything in my business. Really? Yeah. Right, Bob Grunge? <laughs> a large number of these homeless veterans live with the lingering effects of post-traumatic stress disorder, as I mentioned. Mayor also mentioned substance abuse. I mean, it'll tear your heart out. These guys and gals come back and will turn to an alternate lifestyle, alternative lifestyle, and you wonder, you know, what have we, what have we created here? What have we done to make their lives a little easier? Where's our own humanity? For all Americans, in a few weeks we'll be celebrating Memorial Day. Having so many of our veterans, many of whom fought and are injured in defense of our freedoms, living on the streets, and they are literally living on the streets. I didn't make up this number. And I know the veterans who came here today, I know just about every one of them. They care about these things. But they can't snap their fingers, they don't have a magic wand. So unless we work together, we're not going to get it done. You know me, I'm from the streets. Don't let my titles or my education fool you. I grew up on these mean streets here. So don't give me any line of baloney that will get to it when we get to it. And I say the same thing to you as I say to the bureaucrats in Washington. You didn't, you didn't hire me. You didn't vote for me to be a bureaucrat down in Washington, D.C. to fall in with those clowns. You wanted me to go down there and say, this is what our needs are. Let's find a way to do it together. Patterson has done that. Thank you, Mayor. Let's give the Mayor another round of applause. We appreciate it. This particular project makes use of the Federal Shelter Plus Care Program. Uh, it will provide uh, for vouchers of about $661,000 <coughs> in assistance. Many of the tenants in this building will need. Shelter Plus Care offers rental assistance that when combined with social services because this is not simply going to be an isolated building. We're going to have social services here. I wouldn't be part of it unless it was. This has to be part of the shelter. You've got to provide services for our veterans who need them. It provides supportive housing for homeless people with disabilities and their families. Critical, critical part of this. So while living in this facility, on the very place that we're sitting and standing right now, the veterans will be able to get the supportive services that they need through a partnership with the Salvation Army, Department of Veterans Affairs, and other community organizations. This is a real local state federal partnership. These are the kinds of innovative solutions to those in the private sector who came forward. We salute them. Let's give the private sector, because they're taking a big risk here, let's give them a great round of applause. Hopefully, through the work of these committed partners, we will be able to make a difference in the lives of our veterans. That's why we're here today. We must celebrate and honor the courageous and faithful men and women who have nobly served our country by making sure that they are provided with the services they need when they come home. And I want to leave you with this one thought. I meant it the way I, exactly the way I said it. 
sometimes what I said gets me in trouble. But if you talk from your heart, you'll be okay in the final analysis. We did not prepare for the two wars we went into. We were ill-prepared, not only just because of the kinds of vehicles we risked their lives in trying to fight for the cause. We did not prepare them. We did not test them before they went onto the battlefield to provide for, which we do now, nine years after the fact, eight years after the fact, which we provide them with a baseline test as to see whether they should even be on the battlefield or not. Not unlike what we're doing in the NFL, the National Football League. Bish and I make sure we have provided a base test for anybody before they go out onto the football field. And you know what? This is for all sports because we may have to do a test when that person gets a concussion. So you need a baseline. We will do this. And sure as hell we did prepare for them when they came back because the signature injury of the two wars had to do with no contusions, no blood, but you have a concussion and a serious traumatic brain injury or the possibility of misdiagnosed post-stress traumatic disorder. We are here today not as a charity case, but we are here to fulfill our obligations to the great group of veterans that we love and that we pray for day in and day out. And I'm honored to be amongst those heroes those elms in the middle of the forest. God bless you, happy warriors. You have a friend in Washington, D.C., and in Patterson, New Jersey. God bless you.